What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we are here at the Nerd Castle with the next episode of Sid Meier's Pirates in which we are finally chasing down the Marquis de Montalban one more time. So last we heard he was headed towards San Juan, and so that's where we're going to because we can't afford to age any further. We gotta take this guy out right now. We are not like a fine wine, we get nastier and more vinegary the older we get. And so that's really sort of galvanizing me forward, making sure that I am really in sort of the mood to murder this guy. So off we go. I am also carrying around too many ships, so what I may end up doing when we get to San Juan is I may think about unloading some of these ships because I need more men. He's got kind of a nasty ship. It is a little bit difficult to deal with. Unfortunately, we've got a crosswind going. This is what always happens every time you try and travel anywhere, so if you're not going west, guess what? It's a one-way trip. That is the story of Sid Meier's Pirates. I may be able to use... if we can ride this storm right here slightly... Kind of. Yeah. I mean, you can sometimes get a little bit of slingshot action going around. We still haven't been promoted to Spanish Admiral, weirdly enough. I've been beating up Dutch ships all along the way, and it just doesn't seem to be doing much for us, so I suppose that's life. It looks like the Dutch and the English are at war, the Spanish and the Dutch are still at war. Okay. And so the Spanish, in case you were wondering, Rio de la Hacha got taken back by the Spanish, so there is no longer a Dutch port down there. You have no options if you're trying to speak with the Dutch, aside from Curacao down on the northern coast of South America. Damn it. Go over there. Worst wind directions ever. Sometimes it can be really, really difficult to catch the marquee. I don't know if you've ever tried to do this before, but speaking from experience, this guy can be a huge pain in your ass to get ahead of. Especially since all I really want to do is go to port and sell off one of these ships. Come on. Give me a favorable wind, I beg you. Thunder gods, listen to me. Let's make sure that he's not already there. He's headed in the direction of San Juan. Okay, so he's not in San Juan yet, which is good. Let's see here. You have an aunt who's been missing for many years. The evil Spaniard, Baron Raimondo. Oh, good, we have Raimondo on our list, too. Oh, and he's in San Juan as well. Okay, well, that's what I'm talking about right there. Line him up and shoot him down. That's a really, really good result for us. So let's get rid of some of these ships, because obviously I don't need them. We'll go to the tavern, maybe grab a couple more guys to hang out on our ship just in case. Yeah, I stopped an invasion force off camera, but it's just one of those things that I did all by my lonesome. Let's see if maybe we can get a favorable wind long enough to get us down there. Essentially what I'm forced to do right now is I'm sailing sort of towards the shore, trying to get a decent line that will take me around this right here. There we go. And so now we can whip it, whip it good, and then off towards San Juan we go. This might actually turn out pretty well for us, assuming I can beat Montel Bon. I can already feel the butterflies in my stomach. I hate fighting Montel Bon. He's so hard. He's so fast too. The problem, it's even worse on the highest difficulty. He gets to the point of almost absurdity on the highest difficulty. I've seen people do it, but I've never seen anybody flawless him on highest difficulty. I've seen a lot of people beat him on highest difficulty. Come on, San Juan, don't fail me now. Not interested in beating up a treasure ship right now. Oh, there's Montel Bon. All right, let's do this thing. We don't have much of a choice, so... Oh my god, I can already feel the jitters. I always get jitters before I fight him. I don't know why. It's like almost like a weird adrenaline rush thing before I fight Montel Bond because he's just such a challenging character to fight with. Alright, so we want to go with a rapier, I guess. We're a lot older than the last time we fought him, so this might get ugly. Oh, hell. My goal here is to knock him back as far as possible. Oh, he got me. Oh, hell. Okay, so he's up the stairs now. You don't want to get trapped on the stairs with this guy. Oh my god, you do not. Yeah, like this right here, where it'll just go back and forth. Because the animation disrupts you. He actually has an advantage because he starts his attack the second the animation's over. So sometimes you miss out on the advantage. Oh. And, oh, we got him. Oh, nice. Okay, so we took him out. The evil Marquis falls over the railing. And the reason I'm so nervous about fighting him is because you lose everything if you lose to him. Like that 160,000 gold that we have on deck right now, 
we lose all of that if we lose to him. He actually throws us off on some treasure island type deal. We end up marooned, basically. Anchor Shallows, haven't we seen that around somewhere? I think we've seen Anchor Shallows. I think Anchor Shallows might have been the one by our uncle. I'm going to go back and watch the footage of the previous episode, but I'm pretty sure Anchor Shallows was the one where our uncle was up north of this. So we may know where his hideout is, and that's the final boss right there. That's how you win the game, is by finding his hideout and defeating it. So maybe... We're going to have to divide the gold before we do it anyways, because we're not going to be able to have a suitable military force to attack his hideout. But whatever. So there's some gold to keep everybody happy. 5,000 gold pieces. We'll keep the ship. And Raimondo should be here pretty soon too, so that we can find our aunt. I'm going to go to the shipwright, and oh, we got to get rid of 86 tons. Is it mostly food? Okay, it's mostly food. Let's go ahead and unload the food. We'll also unload the guns. There we go. So now, God, I'm still... Whew, fighting that guy can be really, really intense. Oh, he's sailing for Caracas now. Okay, so while we're up here... And we've got somebody that wants us to dance with her. I guess we'll go along with that. We may as well. Ooh, almost missed that one, too. I think it's because we're getting older, and so the game's getting more challenging. It's going to take us a little bit more effort. Looks like they're all getting the dress from the same person. Although I'm thinking the only... It's weird. This time through, we haven't had any really, really ridiculously attractive females in our playthrough. And I just mean that by what the game calls them. I'm not saying that as like a value judgment or anything. I'm just saying that the, the really attractive females have not been in this playthrough. And I think they've majority have got to be French or something. The only one that we found so far, I think, was at Port de Pie or something like that. So we'll go up there and we'll see how that works out. Mm, the Port de Pie makes me hungry. I like... Oh, hell. I corrected myself on accident. I shouldn't have. Port de Pie makes me hungry. Makes me start thinking about cobblers and things. Because I am quite the fatty when it comes to, like, terrible, terrible food for my body. Like, I always tell people that. I go to the gym, like, maybe two and a half, three hours a day. But I always tell people I don't do it to, like, look fit or anything. I do it so that I can eat just horrible food without guilt. Just absolutely terrible food without any guilt. There we go. We'll try and fix that off. I think it should be over pretty soon. It's starting to get that familiar tinge of being over. Ooh. They always get me with the front to back because they never do front to back very often. How'd that count as a trip right there? It was already in the slow motion thing. Okay, St. Eustatius. How far away is St. Eustatius? St. Eustatius is right there. Well, there is something to consider in going and grabbing that bounty, coming all the way back down around, and grabbing Rock Brasiliano's treasure, and then heading west and trying to find ourselves Baron Raimondo. However, I don't know if that's the best plan or not. I think we'll probably try that, I guess. Oh, that's K Farthing's Worth and A Farthing's Worth. Oh, they're both in St. Eustatius? Alright. I wasn't aware that that could happen, but it looks like we've got some amount of overlap in between our criminals. Either that or he's just changed his first name. He's not a very good criminal. He keeps his last name of his alias, but he changes the first one around just to kind of help out a little bit. How easy it must have, like, you think about how easy it must have been back then to get away with a crime. Like, back in, during this time period, you could just, like, do a crime and then just go to a different town. And they were like, well, I guess we'll never catch him. And, like, that was that. <laughs> Like, they must have had a horrible, horrible apprehension rate. I think we can make it off to the east. Come on, make it happen. There we go. We've got a favorable wind for a second, and I think if I can make careful use of that storm, maybe. No, it's not going to let me have the storm. That's okay. I didn't want the storm that much anyways. It's really, really difficult to contain a storm. So even if you own one and you have it on your person, it becomes very, very difficult to really kind of wrangle it in one way or another. It's like herding cats, basically, which sounds like an awesome job. I mean, I've heard people use that phrase all the time, and I'm like, oh, if I could have a job herding cats, that would be the greatest job ever. When is 
So he actually made it to Caracas already. That's bad. Let's see here. Can guarantee an invitation that we can get a fancy hat. That does seem like a good idea, but I'm gonna let it go for now. Get a few more pirates to come with us. We'll unload that other ship because obviously we don't need it. Got eight months worth of food. Let's fill up a little bit higher because I like to have a bit more. Just in case. And then we'll go down to St. Eustatius. And once we're there, we will apprehend one or two of the criminals. I don't know how this is going to work. I've never had two criminals on the same location with the very similar name. Maybe they're brothers or something and they're meeting up in St. Eustatius. There we go. Emergent gameplay. Let's go ahead and fight him. Off the balcony he goes. He should know better. Look at him and then look at us. Although we will start to age pretty soon. If you take a look at our character, he'll start to grow a beard and like a bunch of other stuff pretty soon. His hair will start to gray out as you get older and older. I really, really do enjoy the aesthetic changes they made to the character as you age and everything. Giving you that little bit of feedback. He wants to give us a shrunken head. No. You stand trial, you dick. So he won't... So since we can't do that, maybe if I go out and then I sail back. There we go. Oh, hell, I used the cutlass. I didn't mean to. Ah, well. I guess all of our lasses will be cut before much longer. That thing looks really sinister. It's got, like, little jaggies and serrets and stuff on it. It's a little bit terrifying. It's a weapon that could deal some serious damage, like a Chris knife. Ooh. Managed to get out of the way. There it is. And so knocked out he becomes... Oh, he said he's going to face justice. All right, that's cool. Let's go ahead and talk to the governor. I just happen to have a ruby ring. Oh, she was the beautiful one. Okay. I'll take the brace of pistols because that allows us to force our enemy back by two steps when we start. Wait, was she beautiful or was she just attractive? I can't remember. Ah, well. Off we go, off we go. I think we want to do now is let's go after Rock Brasiliano's treasure. And ourselves a little bit more cash. I do think we're pretty much at the point right now with our treasure to where we don't have to worry about our crew mutinying or anything. I think we've got more than enough cash on board. Although we do sort of have a giant moving target on our foreheads. Let's go and see if we've gotten any French promotions. We've been doing a lot of stuff lately. And maybe the French will be happy to see us. Bonjour. Ah, we're a count now. His attractive daughter wants to go to the ball. Sure, why not? Let's go to the ball and see if we can find any other criminals. Oh good, this one's a little bit slower. I still love the color of that dress. Every time I see that thing, that color is crazy. I think it's the color combination though because it got the navy with the violet. I likes it. I likes it a lot. Ah well, to be rich and to be fancy. Hey, isn't that the dream? Isn't that what we're all working towards? Maybe not. I think some of us just working towards being remembered. That'd be enough. Let's go ahead and finish this thing off. I feel like we've been dancing. Like, it seems like a lot of... I'm not trying to be a dick, but all the women in this place look the same. Like, look at all the girls in the background. They've even color-coded all of their dresses and things. You know, a little bit more diversity. I like how the Count is just, like, sitting back there waiting to see what's going to happen, but he doesn't have to dance. You're like, man, this is my party. I don't have to dance at my own party. You all dance for my entertainment. We should have this one dead bang, and she'll give us another criminal, I think. Now, you might be asking, why does it matter how attractive your wife is? The attractiveness of your wife is also going to help you based on the information that she gives you. So every now and again, you're going to check back in with your wife whenever you go to your home port. And she'll either give you information or gifts. And the more attractive she is, the better the gifts and information she gives you are. So I don't know why that is. Whether she goes out and just like puts it on the corner or something to make people fess up or I don't know. I have no idea how she comes by the information. But attractiveness factors into the amount of information that she is able to parlay with you. Or relay, I guess. God, this is taking forever. Come on now. There we go. All finished up. She's probably just going to give us a criminal, I think. I think she's one of the attractive daughters. I think the head model's different. 3,000 gold in San Juan. Damn, but we got to go back to San Juan. Ah, uh, well. I'm not going to go back there right now. We're going to go for Rock Brasiliano's treasure first. Then we'll go after Raimondo. Then we'll go after, I don't know, whoever we can. This could be quite the considerable walk. 
think we need to slip through right there. Yep. Off we go. So I guess I'll just twiddle my thumbs for a little bit and we'll wait for good things to happen. We also need to make friends with the Spanish. We really need to get our rank up with the Spanish. Our fame went up slightly by getting promoted with the French. So we're a count in the French, we're a duke here. And this actually did happen, in case you were wondering historically whether or not this is accurate. There are indeed, there were pirates, there were privateers back in the day who held like a colonel's position in the Spanish military, a officer's like major's position in the English military. Like they had multiple commissions from multiple countries and they would just switch sides based on where the money was basically. Kind of an interesting little piece of history. This, is, I think there's a reason so many people are into pirates and things like that, because it's a very unique time period. Am I down by Nalmuk? Okay, we're down by Nalmuk now. I was going to say, I'm getting that familiar feeling that I may be right about where I want to be. So we've got Blood Reef. Is that what we wanted, Blood Reef? So if we go directly... I think I'll probably put in next to the Indian Totem, maybe. So we're north of Nalmuk right now, and we're looking for an Indian Atutum. Okay, and so there's an Indian Totem. We want to head straight west from this to Archrock. So let's go around this. They have really large clipping planes around them, in case you were wondering why it's sometimes difficult for me to go in the proper direction. There we go. And so we'll head straight west. Which should at some point... Take us to, not a geyser. Oh, if we get to the geyser, though, that works, too, because it's south of the geyser. So let's just go to the geyser, I guess. And time does pass while you're, like, standing still, I think. So you'll want to be careful about that, too. So the geyser's out here. We want to go south from the geyser now. There it is. You've got it off in the distance. Hopefully, I don't think Rock Brasiliano was that high on the list, so I think we're probably not going to get much out of this one, but it's worth hitting it so that we can unlock other ones. 4,000. Okay, not amazing, but not bad either. It's like knocking over a treasure ship or a, a pay fleet, if you know what I mean. Let's go ahead and swing wide right here. I may try and... Well, we're going to have to find Baron Raimundo anyways. Let me make sure I know who's at war with who. The Dutch and, okay, so the Spanish are at war with the French as well. So let's go ahead and we'll find, I think we'll probably go down to Curacao and we'll probably beat them up for a little while. Perhaps making it a little bit easier for us to succeed. With the Spanish, we've got the tavern over here. He's headed for Rio de la Hacha. Okay. Might be manageable. I'm not going to bring anybody else along with me right now because I think that might be a bit of folly. But up until then, I do find it interesting that when you go into port at pirate locations, you're wearing the lowest tier version of the Dutch outfit. Why that was just arbitrarily selected, I don't know. But if you notice, it's a little bit of a... It's not an Easter egg, but it's its weird. Let's see if we can make for Rio de la Hacha before anything terrible happens. I don't think we can get there in time, but we can try. And then we'll keep an eye out for any Dutch ships along the way, too. So we'll take this one out, the Expediti. Sneak around slightly right there. Give him a volley. And that was a reasonably decent one. Not the best one I've ever fired, but ah, hell. Stick to the quick attack here to make this thing go a little bit faster. And off the ship he goes. A little bit of cash. He wasn't smuggling too much. Some basic kind of provisions and some random luxuries. So we might earn a little bit of cash off of that. You'll get the best cash for luxuries and things if you go to larger, more prosperous ports in general. Although I have seen poorer ports paying quite a bit of money for luxuries too. So it sort of depends, I guess. Trade Galleon. It's kind of weird. Once you switch sides and you're no longer beating up like... Once you're no longer beating up the Spanish. It gets a little bit nerve-wracking. We could take that military payroll right there, but that might cancel out any of the extra work that we've been doing. Like I said, there's always something delicious going on in Spanish territory. It's just being there when it happens that becomes difficult. 
hopefully, we're going to check in at every single location like Caracas. And we'll see if maybe they've taken off already. That's what we want to be sure that we don't show up somewhere after he's already left. That's the worst. Okay, he's still in Rio de la Hacha. Go to the merchant. We'll unload all of these luxuries. I think we're like too high right there. No, never mind. We will divide later. I don't want to do that right now. I want to consult with the shipwright. We'll sell that off. And we'll be back out and away again for the last couple minutes. We've got a favorable wind. Things are looking like they're going in our direction for once. However, why do I have a British flag flying over my ship? I know you can change it. I think you go right here. Yeah. So we'll swap this over to just like a pirate flag. That seems cool. There we go. So now we're flying a pirate flag. In other games, so for example, in Age of Pirates 2, flying different flags confuses the enemy. And it makes it so that ships might not run away from you. So let's say you're running a Spanish flag and you're trying to run up on a Spanish ship. They won't run away from you because they don't know you're a pirate. And you can hail them and things like that. And you can parlay with their captain and then kill them. Age of Pirates 2 is a pretty decent game. Although it does have a lot of flaws. You've got to patch it up with some of the community patches. Otherwise, it's almost unplayable. But it is a good game. I played quite a bit of Age of Pirates. That's the... That's where you go. After you finish Sid Meier's Pirates, you go play Age of Pirates because it's like a more complicated version of Sid Meier's Pirates. But you're going to have to patch it up quite a bit before it becomes playable. Believe me there. The default version is not going to do it for you. You got There's like a modded patch that somebody has done that adds in like a million different things. It's essentially like a mod pack and it's, it's really, it's so much better than the base game. Where's this guy at? We got here after he left, didn't we? He's probably off to like San Juan or something again, which is fine because I've got a criminal to catch up there, but... Gots to do what you gots to do. We'll talk to the tavern keeper. Nombre de Dios. Oh, he's headed out further to the west. Okay. Ten more pirates. And I'm gonna continue in that direction. We're not gonna break this thing off until I find Raimundo. And I have yet, and you'd think these guys would eventually give me all the information they have instead of giving me little tiny parcels of information every time I run them down. I should hit every tavern keeper along the way to see if we can get a new treasure map going. Nah, I don't want the dancy hat. I don't really want that either. Continue adding men to the ship. It gets harder and harder to add men to your ship the less happy everybody is. So, if you've been wondering why we haven't been getting like 80, 90 people at a time when we're recruiting, it's because nobody's happy. Everybody is miserable at the moment. Actually, oh hell. I do kind of want the ruby ring so that I can get somebody to marry me, but that's the one thing we haven't done yet is we need to get married. Although you can handle that in the later game because it doesn't have too many checksums on it. Like you aren't really going to have to do anything too impressive. Let's see if I can find this bastard anywhere. I don't see him. We'll hang tight. It'll be okay. Nombre de Dios is off to the west here. I don't see him, but I, I want him. I want to take him out right this second. So I would prefer to find... There he is, Raimondo. Wow, he fired at us from a really long ways away. That was a Hail Mary right there. On board, Zephetus. This will be another 3,000 gold for the coffers. He's going to try and shred us up a little bit. There we go. I'm going to try and shift that. That killed off about 70 of his men, so I'm just trying to keep the fight a little bit in our favor. Up the stairs he goes. I do wish there was a little bit of variability in the animations, but this game's from a long time ago, so what are you going to do? It's hard to believe that 2005 counts as a long time ago now. It's depressing. And so our aunt is somewhere around Puerto Bello. Alright, well that's better than some of the other locations we've had. There's the other 3,000 gold that we always get every time we beat him. We'll put into port right here at Nombre de Dios. We're going to get in trouble with the governor for beating up a Spanish ship. But unfortunately, it's not my fault that all the bad guys are Spanish. There we go. Let Ol and I. That's what I wanted. So now we've got a new treasure. We'll beat up this random Spanish officer. 
because he looked at me wrong. That's okay, he's got shoulder pads. That fall doesn't hurt anybody with shoulder pads. Don't worry, my shoulders are perfectly fine. My hip and my leg might be broken, but damn, these shoulders are 100%. And there we are. Okay, and now I think what I will do is we'll sell off some of this food and then we'll break off the episode. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Sid Meier's Pirates. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, arr and hi-do.